platform, the YouTube was 3D. Whoa, whoa, thrust, yeah, make you duck. This is that Yugo SKS. You probably saw a video I did on this earlier. Um, we talked about the, the integral uh, bayonet right here on the barrel. It's locked, in, it's locked in place now, and it's actually pretty secure. It's not going anywhere, it's not flopping around. But uh, we'll take a look how this, how you take the bayonet out of this one. Let's take a look at that SKS bayonet. This whole, looks like a little handle. It needs to be pulled down, it's kind of a stiff spring. It needs to be pulled down, it'll unhook it. The whole thing will swing up. Now just kind of lock in place. It locks in place in two points. It locks in place down here and up here on the barrel. So that's actually got two good places to hold it and it's actually pretty solid. Thing's not gonna, not gonna go anywhere. Um, it does have an 11 inch blade, but only eight inches of it stick out past the barrel. This is that Carcano, the uh, cavalry uh, carbine. And just like that SKS that had that, had that fold away bayonet, this one is actuated by the button. We'll press the button, the whole thing will swing out, and it kind of, I have to kind of manually lock it in place, it didn't automatically click. It kind of looks like it sags down. I think that's good, so you don't get uh, any uh, bullet strike, maybe? But it does look like a little, has like a droopy bayonet, like a, maybe a sad bayonet. But that's, that's about as long as the barrel there. <laughs> There's that little, like a little tiny, put it back in place. There's that little tiny Carcano with that great big long, it's actually three-sided bayonet. I believe these were banned by the uh, Geneva Convention because anything more than two uh, cutting blades like, made, a, made a nasty wound that was hard to stitch up. So I think these were, I think these were uh, later a band that, 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 that tried it like, uh, or that tri-bladed tri uh, bayonet. It kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of curious, kind of neat. You don't see these too often. This is a British. Lee Enfield, number four, Mark one. Um, and the British thought, hey, all we, we don't need a blade, we don't need a knife, we just, all we need is a, a, uh, a spike. And put a, we'll just put a spike on the end of that. But let's take a closer look at uh, this one. The spike bayonet has an underside, it's a spring-loaded locking mechanism. You will have to push this in, and the whole thing has to be rotated before it can come off. So there's a, there's a, you can take the whole thing and push. If you push this in, you don't need to use the button to, to get it on, but you do need the button to get it off. So you can just, if you're in a hurry, just put it on, give it a little quick twist, and it's locked in place, and it's, 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 it's on there pretty good. And all there is is that spike at, at the end. But that's, a, that's that Lee Enfield uh, spike bayonet. This little cutie is that, is that uh, M1 carbine. And after World War II, or late, late World War II and, and, and thereafter, they put a, a bayonet lug, a little fatter band and a bayonet lug on the a barrel. So you could have a really cool, real nice knife bayonet. Um, this would just slip on, it has a hole through the bayonet, so slip over the, over the barrel, and then it would lock in place down at that, that additional bayonet lug. Um, we can take a little closer look at this awkward little bayonet. The M1 carbine bayonet may be one of the most awkward ones to take off. These two, have to be pinched. You see these two little tabs here need to be pinched. They squeeze and they release that slide. And, it, and I'm, there's no, I don't know a good way of doing this without dumping your bayonet on the ground. But when you go to put it on, it goes on pretty nice. But when it comes off, you got to pinch and what, putting that, there it goes, falling off again. Um, probably the most awkward ones, but uh, nice uh, bayonet. You know, and you, it's, it's got the shoot through hole, goes over the end of the barrel. So it doesn't really, Lock in place, very solid. It's got a little wobble to it. It's got a little, got a little looseness there. And like I said, it's kind of awkward getting that thing on and off. But that's the M1 carbine bayonet. This is that Springfield uh, 1903A3, and it's got a cut down bayonet. Um, this is a cut down one. The, originally, these were much, much longer. I believe, I believe it was a 10 inch blade. I think these are cut down, or maybe even longer than that. Um, these were these were cut down because. They decided it was too awkward, too too long, too too much too much knife. Um, but it's got a little got a little push button, and it just kind of lifts off. You press that button, it lifts off the end of the barrel. Again, has that shoot through hole. Um, and the kind of neat thing about this, it's made to fit onto that that Springfield rifle. We'll set that down. But this same bandit, this cut down version. 
that same bayonet will also fit onto the M1 Garand. The, the, the lug and the barrel make, made up, match up. So you can swap this bayonet. So you're, if you're making bayonets during World War II, it's gonna fit either your M1 Garand or your Springfield rifle, and they're interchangeable. And this was, like I said, that, that cut down version. The original bayonets were much, much, much longer. After World War II, the U.S. Army was still using that M1 Garand, but now they switched to a different bayonet style. This one had a, had a button here, and it would, it's kind of, it would slide in, but you notice it does not have the shoot-through hole. This one had a little tab, this little nub, it would go into the gas block. So it would slip on, lock in place that way. And this is actually pretty solid, maybe even more solid than the one with the, that went around the, around the, around the barrel. This was actually a pretty, pretty solid setup. You'd see this in the late 50s, early 60s, before they made the transition to the M14, then eventually the AR15 or the M16. But late, late 50s, this was, this was the style of bayonet you're gonna see on your, on your M1 Garand. Um, this is the style my dad was familiar with. He, he went in the Army in 1957. This is the style he was using on his M1 Garand. It was this, that, and that old shoot-through was the, was the World War II version. We'll just take a closer look at that, and you'll see at the end there's that, 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 that gas block and this more modern, modern style, 1950s style bayonet would go on and just lock in place there, that, that little nub. There we go, that's locked. And then we see the older, that World War II style, which had the shoot-through hole. This would again slip on, but at the same time, you'd go around your barrel. And not nearly as stable, it's loose around that barrel, not nearly as stable or as solid as the second one. Oh, that thing is much, much more solid. Two, two M1 Garands, two different styles of bayonets. And here you can see, here's the, here's the barrel. Here's the barrel on that, on that 1903 A3. And we take a look at the barrel on that Garand. And there's a big gap there. Now you see why this didn't have that snug fit. It really, really was really more, more, more of that hole than we needed to for that Garand. That's why that sloppy fit on there. And we see just, just a little loose, a little sloppy. You see why they went with that other design on that, on that, on that later, on that later uh, Garand, Garand bayonet. But it fits really nice, much, much nicer on that Springfield. I saved, I saved the best for last. Look at that. That is the Craig Jorgensen. Look at that, it's like a sword on the end. Um, when this thing is all put together from, from, butt, from butt plate to the tip of that bayonet is 61 inches. So five feet, one inches from top to bottom. That is one long, that's one long get up. That's reach out there and poke and stab and get all that thing from a distance. Um, let's take a look at this one. This one, this might be my favorite one. This is that, this is that great big long sword of a bayonet. This is uh, off that Craig Jorgensen. You'll see it's stamped US. If we turn it over, it's stamped 18, 1899. And remember, I've got that 1898 version of the Craig Jorgensen. This, Probably the same year the, the, the crag was made. But again, it has that shoot-through hole. It slides on. And, and that thing makes one big, long setup. Um, it's a good thing I got a 12-foot long workbench here. Was, otherwise, we wouldn't have enough room for this thing. But it's got a button. It would be on the, uh, on the left side. Press the button. The whole thing slides right off. And then again, we're back to having that, that sword-like bayonet. Lots and lots of fun. You can see the handle shape is almost identical from that Craig Jorgensen to that 1903. And the, they're very, very similar shape, style, design, just two completely different weapons. And obviously this one on the left here has been cut down with that long blade there on the, for that Craig Jorgensen. Kind of neat. Well, we've gone from simple spikes and great big giant swords to, uh, do they even use bayonets anymore? Are bayonets on the, on the M4s or bayonets on the uh, new M16? I don't even know. 
Um, but for uh, when you're fighting trench warfare, this was predates World War One, obviously. Um, but this thing here was be like a sword. Uh, and it's kind of funny how when you get to World War II, they, things are much simpler. We need to knock these out. We need to make a million of these things. This uh, number four Mark II B um, spike. I, this is, I've, <laughs> I remember these things were being sold for like five and six bucks each. And now they're actually being kind of hardly, they're kind of highly sought after. Um, but bayonets, you don't see them on your, on your sporting rifles. You don't see bayonets on your Model 94s, your Winchesters, or your Remingtons. Um, but you do see them on your surplus guns. Um, where else, where else going to find, where else going to find some really cool knives? I guess a, uh, a rifle without a bayonet is pointless. Anyway, um, some fun with, some fun with bayonets. We'll see you in the next video.